Hello and welcome, as you can tell, this is going to be a full raid guide on Destiny 2's Leviathan raid. We've got some encounters, as well as some underbelly, and some tips and tricks. I'm taking this guide from the point of view of someone who's never even heard of a raid before, so I'll have some timestamps in the description for people who only need help with specific areas. I recommend watching the whole video before starting the raid, so you have a good picture of what you want to do the moment your guardian lands on the Leviathan. First off, I know this might seem obvious, but a raid is a six-man activity filled with puzzles and other difficulties. For this, you must have communication with your fire team. A great app to find a fire team on is Bungie.net. You have to sync up your PS4 account to whatever device you have it on, but once you set that up, you'll be good to go. Okay, to enter the Leviathan, you're going to have to go to your director, and then you're going to go to the top right. You're going to go over to Ness's. And then you're going to go all the way to the bottom and click on where it says Leviathan. And then you're going to click on Leviathan. All those other symbols are other raids and not part of the raid I'm currently explaining. Uh, you want to click on normal mode because Prestige has other tricker mechanics that I won't be explaining in this video. So most likely you're going to be a fire team for six when you get into this, but I'm just going solo. Um, when you enter the raid, take the path I'm currently taking. Note, these ads will not shoot you. They'll only attack you if you attack them. Uh, while we wait for the this video little area to go, note that the term ads means basically any other, you know, enemies that are running around that aren't pertinent to ending the raid. Like, you know, a bunch of thralls are running around. You, those are called ads. You don't need to kill them, but if too many of them start spawning, they're going to murder you, and you got to get people to uh, kill those ads. So, I'm just going to wait here until I go all the way. Yep, so you just follow all the way over here and once you take this last corner we have finally made it to the first encounter this encounter is called Castellan. it's probably the easiest raid encounter ever so much so that most people don't even call it an encounter first of all people should be running ad clearing supers like stormcaller dawn blade or nova bomb for warlock blade barrage arc strider or night stalker for hunter and anything except thunder crash and big bubble for titan there should be a map up on screen now, and I'll explain it in the basics about what's going on the map. Basically, we have four plates. We got cup, dog, axes, and sun plate. Remember these symbols because they're going to be used throughout the entire raid. So just go ahead and get those implanted into your memory. Run around until you find one of these plates that has a holographic picture on one of the four symbols. Basically, this one for sun. When there, kill all the ads until you hear this sound. That basically means that you just started the encounter. Now you're going to split your team into two. One team goes to the new plate that I'm about to show where it is. This team is called the Runners. And the second team stays back and kills all the ads at this home plate. This team called Defenders. Quick tip on the first round of this. Actually, everyone can go because there's nothing to defend yet. But it's better just to keep your team split so people get comfortable with where they are. Uh, now, when the people go out, they have to find a symbol that you'll see right there that I just spawned on that home plate over there. So now you're going to look around the map, and it should be on a bunch of banners. And so you run over to it, and once you get to the correct spot, you're going to have to kill all the ads over there. Until a, uh, a big mini boss shows up, you're going to kill him. And on the plate I'm talking about, it's on every single area. You're going to find a big lamppost thing will show up. One of the runner grabs it and goes back to the home plate, and they plant it. And a new symbol will show up. Runners do the same exact thing with wherever that new symbol is two more times. After the runners plant, there will be a noise that sounds like this. And the defenders now have a new objective on top of killing Adge, which is protect the lamppost. A new type of enemy called the Liberator will spawn. 
these guys reach the lamppost, then the lamppost disappears and the runners have to go out again and get that lamppost at the same location. These liberators sometimes spawn with shields. To break these shields, one of the defenders must go look for a scion and a bubble. Go into the bubble and punch the scion. Make sure to punch him. And the liberator loses shield and you can kill him. Once the runners bring back three lampposts, the defenders and the and the defenders successfully defend. A bell and a little tune will play, and the door will open and the chest will spawn. Congratulations, you have only just begun. Baths? Yep, done. I go top right. Okay. Uh, I don't care. I'll go bottom right. Now, to explain Baff's encounter, I'll switch between gameplay and the map on the screen to make the explanation process easier. Just so you know, they call dog plate hounds and sun plate spears on the map. This has no impact on the actual encounter, it's just another way of naming the plates. The goal of the encounter is to break all the lanterns, these little dots on the map, in the middle. So how do you do that? As you can see by the pink dots, there are five plates. One in top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left, and middle. Each person must be standing on that plate at all times. In front of the plate is a ticking mechanism. Every once in a while, a bather will jump out and try to kill the person on the plate. Kill him via a sword or anything with good damage except an explosive thing because you will blow yourself up. On a lot of the floor, there will be a purple liquid. This purple liquid will hurt you and kill you if you aren't careful. It, the only way to not get damaged by this liquid is have a psionics protection buff. You get these buffs by running into orbs that look like this. These orbs will give you a buff for 50 seconds. Keep all that in mind as I now show a demonstration. First off, as you can see in the gameplay, two people are standing in the middle, and everyone else is at their own plates. Assign these plates and make sure everyone knows their roles. Yeah, yeah. To start the encounter, everyone okay. will jump on the plates. Three, two, one, and jump. Via a countdown or whatever, and get the buff. Now, one of the two people on the middle will rotate to the bottom left, or sorry, the top left, while the other one goes to the top right. If you're on this plate, you will then go to the middle plate, while the guy who just came and took your place stood on the plate you were just on. Uh, the ore buff in the middle is the only one that respawns, so the person who just traded it off will run to the middle, grab the buff, and then go top off the guy that is at the bottom. You see what I'm saying? Uh, if that doesn't make any sense, I'll show some gameplay of it happening. Okay, three, two, one, and jump. There we go. I always forget to put on like a pulse rifle for this one, and all those cabal annoy me. I got gotcha. you. If someone blows sure. themselves up with a uh, grenade launcher while trying to kill their bathers, then I'll be very disappointed. <laughs> there it is. Should I come to me? Yeah, you are. Okay, Jack, I got you, I got you, Jack. Alright. Oh my- Uh, but remember, when you go into the middle, you have some time to kill some of the ads roaming around. It is highly suggested you do so, because it will make the last part of the encounter a lot easier. After each of the mechanism on each of the plates stop ticking, you'll hear a bell, similar to the one you heard in the Castellum. Don't jump Everyone in the middle. Go middle. At this point, everyone will run to the middle and kill the adds and bathers. Yeah. Once you kill the enemies, someone will count down and all at once everyone jumps onto the middle plate. And uh, in this run, I accidentally jumped on the plate too early. So we didn't all get the buff in time, but we still got it. So if you got enough DPS, you don't actually have to count down. But it was a little close. Um, the lanterns in the room 
As you can see right here, will open up and you're now able to damage them. For this use, supers such as Nova Bomb, Celestial Nighthawk, Golden Gun, and Molten Hammers to dish out as much damage as possible. Also, Machine Gun, Grenade Launchers, and Rocket Launchers to kill all the Lanterns. Yeah, no, well, you no. must be standing on the middle plate oh, to do damage. Yeah. If you aren't, you will do zero damage. Most people can kill all the Lanterns in one go, but if you don't kill them all, oh, you have to do it and rinse and repeat. Oh Basically God. meaning you have to do the same thing again. After you kill all the lanterns and you finish the bass encounter, make sure to grab the chest on the way out. Congratulations for if you completed the first actual encounter. Now, this next encounter is called Gauntlet. This is known as the hardest encounter for newbies, but isn't that difficult if explained well, which I will now try to attempt. First, let's bring up the map. You come into the encounter via an elevator, which is the yellow dot in the middle. You are in a room, and if you step out, you will see the rest of the encounter room. There's a band of lamps around the elevator room, which leads to each of the raised platforms, which is a dedicated symbol. Don't jump on these elevated platforms until you're ready, because stepping on them will lower them, and once they're all lower, the encounter starts. There are multiple things I'm going to explain. It might be hard to understand at first, but I'll show some gameplay, and that might also help. So, first off, Dog and Cub have an orb at the front of their platforms, right where these arrows are showing here. When the time is ready, two people will grab them to start running. Figure out that for now, but all you have to know is that two people will start on Dog and Cup, one Defender and one Runner, while only one person stays at Axe and Sons, the Defenders. Because this usually put the most skilled people on Axe and Sun, since they have the most adds to clear by themselves. There are four Defenders and two Runners. Dog and Sun are a team, while Axe and Cup are a team. You don't need to know that now, but keep that in mind for later. When the counter starts, ads will pop out from these areas, kill them, and after a while, a big dude will spawn. Kill this guy as quick as you can, because stuff is about to happen. The plates will start rising, and the defenders must stand on them. For this, let's go to some gameplay. When the platforms start to rise, the orbs will spawn. The runner grabs this orb, and they are transported to the circular thing around the map. They will be ho holding an orb and not be able to move. This or orb has a timer, and if it reaches zero, the orb bearer dies. To refresh this, the orb bearer must run through holes. When they first spawn in, in front of them will be a 3x3 three three grid of circles. Above this grid will be one of the four symbols. One of these circles will be red. It doesn't matter if it's left, right, or middle. It only matters if it's top, middle, or bottom. The runner will call out which one is red. In this case, let's say top. And whatever symbol is on the wall in this case, let's say dog. Now, remember how I said dog and son was a team, and cup and axis was a team? Well, this is when that becomes important. Take an example when runner says dog top. In front of each of the pillars on the wall are three arrows, as you can see right here top, middle, and bottom. When the runner says dog top, the person standing on dog plate will shoot the highest they can on the wall, and the person in sun will shoot the lowest they can on the wall without shooting the place the runner called. If that doesn't make sense, think of it this way. If runner calls dog top, dog plate shoots middle, and sun shoots bottom. If runner calls dog middle, dog will shoot top, and sun will shoot bottom. And if a runner calls dog bottom, then dog shoots top and sun shoots middle. If that doesn't make sense, here's some gameplay of our fire team doing this. If people on the place shoot correctly, then the arrows will flash green, and the runner runs through whichever circle was red on the 3x3 grid, and the orb resets to not exploding. Now, as soon as the runner runs through the red circle, you must jump down off your platform and run in front of it. A sign will spawn in a bubble. Make sure you punch it, and then immediately get back on your plate. Once you get back on your plate, you gotta be ready, because 
at this point the runner will be at sun plate and you're going to do the same thing for him calls out top bottom mid you gotta shoot top bottom mid now the runner that already went through the other two is now going to come over back to your side and they're going to have to run through your plate remember you have to do the exact same thing when the second runner comes through and remember kill your sign and immediately immediately get back on your plate so you can shoot the next plate on your teammates thing once you do that the runners will run across the little red fireworky tapey thing and they'll run to the center of the encounter they will automatically slam their orbs down in the center and that's it you have finished the first phase of this encounter now you have to do that twice more but warning on the third time you do it the platforms will start shaking up and down so be cautious when you're trying to aim in on your uh on your arrows also, quick tip for people on plates, use a scout rifle or a pulse rifle to shoot the arrows because like a submachine gun will be hard to aim. Now, after you've done this three separate times, you're on to the last bit of the encounter. Everyone goes to the middle and orbs will spawn in the elevator. Each person grabs one and they'll be teleported into the gauntlet. That's the little circle area around the map. Each of the 3x3 grids will have four orbs. People change how they do this, but the runner will grab an or the runners will grab an orb from each of the grids. Whilst a dog team, dog and sun defenders, grab orbs from the first wall and the third wall, and on that finish line at the yellow fireworky tapey thing. Whilst cup team, which is cup and axes, take the second or take orbs from the second and fourth wall some people can die on this bit but too many will cause a wipe when approaching a wall people who are grabbing an orb call out which one you're getting like top right bottom left and so on i'll probably show some gameplay of a full run of this so here that is right now if enough people if enough people go through and cross the finish line and then dunk in the middle congrats you've beaten the hardest encounter on the leviathan Now, on to my least favorite encounter, dogs. When you enter dogs, spend some time getting to know the map around you in the little area because it gets very dark at the end. And if you aren't careful, you will lose your sense of direction. Now, let's look at the map. The aim of the game is to kill all the dogs. It seems simple, but it's actually quite challenging. There will be two groups. Crystal, which will be split between left and right crystal. One person on left, one person on right. And runners. The runners will have one person which leads everyone. This person should have the most map knowledge, so it's usually the person who's done this raid the most times. Everyone else running around, or everyone else that's running that isn't the leader, must follow the leader. You must stay near him, or you will screw everything up. Okay, let's get to them explaining. When you enter dogs here on the map, across the map is a statue with callus on it. You will start the encounter over there, but don't immediately go there. First you have to kill all the ads roaming around, and this is also a good time to get used to the area and the layout of the map. Now, jump up onto the pedestal, watch out for the pit, pit of darkness right over here, and get ready. Let's look at the map again. Those dog symbols represent where a dog will spawn at the end. You'll know what I mean later. The one just to the left of the class the platform is L1, the middle the middle one on the left side is L2, and the top one on the left side is L3. Same on the right side, R1, R2, R3, by the closest, the middle, and the farthest. You get the idea. When someone yells, go to dogs, which I'll explain later, you have to go to their assigned dogs. You'll call out dogs at the beginning of the encounter. And you just kill them with either sword, machine gun, shotgun or any of your supers. A good super to use would be Golden Gun, Arc Strider, Blade Barrage, Storm Caller, Nova Bomb, Molten Hammers, and Thunder Crash. On the left and right side of Kallus are two crystals, left crystal and right crystal. 
This is by the orientation of where Callus is looking. Two people will be designated to these crystals. These crystals can be only used whilst in a beam of light. Those beams look like this. So look around the map and the beginning to see which areas oversee which flowers, which you can see over here, and which areas have beams of light. <clears throat> now, these crystal guys must stay on the elevated areas on the map and shoot plants when necessary and roaming cabal whenever you see them. Don't shoot the dogs. When both the crystal people pick up their crystals, a circle on the top of the pedestal will open. Everyone except the crystal people must jump down. On the walls of this area, there will be pollen seeds. Each of the runners must grab one. Once that happens, two flowers will open up. Flowers are shown here on the map. The people on crystal will call out where it is. L1, R1, L2. You get it. This is also where the dogs will go. So if you understand where the flowers are, you'll understand where the dogs are. The leader of the runner group, the one who knows, has the most knowledge of the map, leads everyone out to whichever flowers they think is the best to go to. Make sure everyone follows the leader and don't push the leader. The dogs will be roaming around, and if they face you, you can't get any more buffs from the plants, which I'll explain a little bit later. You can walk behind them when their backs are facing you, as long as you don't run into the dog and hit it. Once the runners reach the flowers that the crystal people called out, uh, the crystal people shoot the flower. Everyone will, everyone nearby will get a buff. And you have to keep going and getting as much as many buffs as you can. Everyone getting near the flowers, not getting seen by the dogs, and so on. The background footage you're seeing is very bad. People kept jumping ahead and pushing and dying. But since we had a bunch of DPS heavy weapons, we were fine. Though a lower lower light level group with bad equipment might not be able to kill their dogs in one phase. And if you can't kill your designated dog within 15 seconds, run back to the pedestal and everyone jumps down the hole where the pollen is. A white mechanic will kill everyone except those in that area, so everyone must be in there. Once that white mechanic is through, rinse and repeat until everyone's dogs are dead. Once you do that, congratulations. Now, all that stands between you and the end of this raid is callous. Now, for an optimal callous fight, each team will want one to two warlocks with Well of Radiant Super and Luna Faction's boots. Also. Uh, you might want a Titan with Bubble Super and Helm of State 14. And all Hunters need to run Celestial Nighthawk Exotic Helmet with Bottom Tree Golden Gun for optimal DPS. To start this encounter, assign people to Void, Left, Right, and Middle. So you need one person left, one person right, and one person middle Void. And three people to Throne Left, Throne Right, and Throne Middle. It will use this information later on when it gets to explaining when that is used, but just forget about that for now. The throne room is an open area with callus to the north and four pillars, one of each symbol. Remember, remember which one is which because it will be needed later on. To start this encounter, either shoot Callus's cup out of his hand or run up to the pedestal he is sitting on. He will stand up and a bunch of ads will come out of doorways. Once all the ads are killed, a sign will spawn on each of the pillars. Don't punch them. They will only make it harder for people in throne room. Now, Callus will clap his hands, and everybody will be teleported to a new area. This area is called Void Room. There are three orbs, right, mid, and left. People assigned throne room, like uh, left, right, or middle. Remember when I said that? They will take their signed orb. So if you're assigned, you know... Uh, throne right, you'll take the rightmost orb that is there. Throne left, you'll take the leftmost orb. And throne middle, you'll take the middlemost orb. The Which we want. Yeah, I get those. I have to get those kills. At this point, the people who are assigned void left, right, mid will go to where the orb is, but not jump over the little wall and grab it. Rather, they'll stay right behind the wall and get ready to call. On Callus's head, a symbol will flash up. Either dog, cup, axes or sun the person on the left most side will call off their symbol and then the middle person on void calls out their symbol and then the person on right calls out their symbol 
Now, remember how there are only three people in Void, but four symbols in the raid? And remember the four pillars where the scion spawns? This time, each scion will have a symbol above its head. Okay. And the people in whichever sign the people in Void Room don't call out. So let's say they call out Sun, Dog, In, and Cup. As you see in this gameplay, as they do, I would punch Axes because that is the only one of the three symbols they didn't call out. Now, people in the room has to do that three times. People in the void room have to do that three times. There is a limit on how long you have to punch the sound. As you can see, there's a little a growing bubble inside the bubble if that reaches all the way out and you haven't punched the correct sound then basically everyone in boardroom dies so make sure you don't do that between each call cycle a bunch of sirens are going to spawn in boardroom so make sure you kill those each time the people in boardroom call the wall breaks and another wall spawns further down if the people hit a ramp or fall off they die so make everyone so make sure everyone in void room takes the correct path. Here is the paths for left, middle, and right void room. So take a look for that. Once three cycles of callouts are made, the callus in throne room will start raising its arm and making a big, bright, glowy light. One of the people in throne room commits suicide via fire or a explosive. Callus will now have a health bar you can shoot, so lower it to about half health, and just before you die, finish breaking his shield. Now, during this time, the callus in Void Room will start spewing out skulls. The people in Void Room have to kill as many as they can. More killed, more damage. Once the people in Throne Room break his shield, probably about maybe 20 seconds later when the people in throne room almost die because he has like a little burn effect once that burn effect almost kills you make sure you break his shield and everyone will be teleported to throne room now get ready to kill him as you can see by the gameplay when you get teleported in take maybe 15 seconds to kill all the ads there then someone counts down and everyone jumps on the top right plate which is sun plate there, you ready three no. two one get on now, the Titan with Bubble puts his bubble on the ground next to the plate so people can grab the Weapons of Light buff. Don't put it on the plate, because if you do, no one can damage Callus. You have to be on the plate to do damage, so make sure you do that. The first Warlock pops as well Radiance on that plate, and everyone starts damaging. Good weapons for damage include Xenophage, Whisper the Worm, and Thousand Voices. And Divinity, if you have it, but I highly doubt you might. Also, shotguns and other close range weapons will be terrible because he's quite a far ways away. After shooting him for a while, he will either go immune if he did a lot of damage or he'll point your, his fist at you and a laser will spawn. Get off of the plate and rotate to the bottom right plate, which should be dogs, but don't get on it until someone counts down. No spoilers, but if he falls to the ground and starts looking weird, his new crit is in the middle of his chest rather than his head. If you get enough damage, he puts his hands above his head and does that weird sun thing. If not, you have to rinse and repeat. If he does the weird sun thing, shoot him with everything you got. And once that goes away, you did it. You beat the Leviathan. Go up to Kallus to see his new form, and then go to the middle of the throne room, and there should be a plate. It turns into an elevator. Go down the elevator and go straight and grab the final chest. Thank you guys Salty. so much for Hopefully watching. If this video helped you out, there, like, please leave a try. like and share it to others. If this video gets a good reception, I might think about doing this for other raids. Yeah, Big thank thanks to Crocus Daddy for helping me get a lot of this footage, and I hope you guys had a great run. See ya!